and welcome to our video tutorial for this boho cat bandana that you can see Melba wearing here. So I hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so for this boho bandana, you'll need uh, yarn. Probably you're going to go with something that's either a cotton or a cotton blend. But, you know, you could use a range of different yarns. For me, the boho look tends to be a cotton look. Although, um, the one I'll show you in a moment that I've already made was made with a bamboo yarn. And that actually turned out really nice. So, um, yeah, I've got this one here, cotton acrylic blend. It's got a few graduated colors through it. It's about a three weight and um, I'm going to use that today with a three millimeter hook. So you'll choose a hook that corresponds to your yarn. Probably somewhere between a two and a three and a half millimeter will work well for this um, for this pattern. Although, you know, if you want to make this a bigger bandana, you could use a larger weight yarn, a higher weight yarn with a larger hook gauge. So, you know, that's how you can vary the size of this bandana. Otherwise, it's pretty much one size. Um, yeah, so the way you can vary it is by varying your yarn weight and your hook size. Now I've got a second hook that I'm going to use, it's a, just a smaller gauge, it's a 2mm and I'm going to use that when we get to making the, or attaching really, the ties and the, um, and the fringe. I just find a, a slightly finer hook um, is useful at that point but that's only optional. You'll need a sharp pair of scissors, a darning needle to weave in your ends, a piece of cardboard or something to make tassels. Now I'm I just this is just an off cut from a box and it's the width is the size that I need for my tassels and the length this length here is the length that I use for my fringe. Okay? And then I do a bit of hair cut cutting and, and you know cut them to the length that I want eventually. But that's what I'm gonna use. So you don't need any fancy tassel maker, although they do exist. Um, you know, you could use a book, you could use your phone, you could use anything that gives you the size of either the tassels or the fringe that you want. But an off-cut from a box works perfectly fine. And I've got an optional tape measure. Now, you don't need an exact measurement of your cat's neck circumference to make this bandana. It's a tie-up bandana, so you can just adjust the length of your ties according to a ballpark figure. And I'll include in the description box below a guide to standard cat neck sizes, and you can work from that. Or, you know, if you've got a measurement, then that's, you know, it's usually better to have an exact measurement if you can get one, but a ballpark is fine for this pattern. Okay, so here's the one that I've made previously. And um, as I was telling you, I made it with a bamboo yarn, and it's it's about this bamboo yarn is just beautiful. It's got this kind of shine to it, and it's um, it's just super soft. It's really lovely to work with, and it it worked out beautifully for this. So this is probably about a two weight yarn. It's a little bit finer than the yarn I'm using today. Um, so to make this, you'll need to know how to make a magic ring, how to double crochet, how to chain and how to slip stitch so when we make these ties we're going to slip stitch this is just an optional technique just to you know add a little bit more decoration to the ties we're going to add optional tassels to the end of the ties and then we will add a fringe at the base of the bandana and you know you get to decide how many of these fringes you want to add um, how long you want them to be it's you know there's lots of leeway for adding your little touch and flourish to this bandana anyway I think that's all other than just you you need to know how to weave in your ends and um, yeah that's pretty much it um, yeah so let's get started Okay, so just before we get started, I'm just going to give you the context of how we'll work this bandana. I find that always helps to understand how you're going to build your project. So we're going to start with a magic ring in the center here, and then we're just going to work our way outwards in these five rows until we get to creating the ties and then creating the fringe and the tassels. Okay, so take your yarn and you're going to start with a magic ring. So if you're not sure about these basic techniques, then 
you know, please brush up before you get started. And there's a few different ways to make a magic ring. So you just make yours in the way that you make yours. And if you know the chain method to start and make a loop that way, then you can also do that too. You're going to chain three to start off this row one, and that will count as your first double crochet. And from there, you're going to insert 10 more double crochets. So I use US terminology. 10 more double crochets into your magic ring and that will give you a total of 11 double crochets okay including your chain so you go ahead and finish that off and I'll do the same and I'll see you shortly okay so I've got my 11 double crochets there and I'm going to just pull on my tail end to close up the ring and that completes our row one from here we're going to chain three, which will count once again as our first double crochet. And then we're going to double crochet in that first stitch underneath the chain. So essentially there we have two double crochets in that first stitch. We're going to chain one, double crochet in the next stitch. Split there a little bit. Okay, so we've got two double crochets, chain one, double crochet in the second stitch. Then we're going to chain two and skip one stitch and place two double crochets in the next stitch. So one and two. Chain two skip one and then we're double crocheting in the next stitch after you've skipped your your one chain two skip one double crochet twice in that next stitch and two so now we're just mirroring how we started this row so you'll chain your two, you'll skip your one, and you've got left one stitch and the chain, which, as you know, counts as your stitch. So you're going to place one double, so you'll skip your one, one double crochet in that last stitch, or second to last stitch. Chain one, but, you know, it's the real stitch. And then we're going to work our last two double crochets, because that's what we need to finish this row. Our last two double crochets in the top of the chain. So always try and take two loops of your chain if you can. You'll just find that will make your work a little bit neater. And that finishes off row two. Okay, so moving on to row three, we're going to start once again with our chain three and turn and place our second double crochet in that first stitch and then in the next stitch two double crochets one and two now working into the chain one space there we're going to place one double crochet In the next stitch, one double crochet. In this chain two space, two double crochets. One and two. In the next, uh, sorry, yes, the next two stitches, one double crochet. two double crochets in that next two chain space one and two now in these these stitches in the center here we're going to place two double crochets in each of those stitches so one and two and then in the second stitch 
two double crochets one and two in the next chain two space two double crochets so now we've passed the halfway point we're just mirroring what we've done on this other side one double crochet in each of the next two stitches one and two the next two chain space two double crochets one and two the next stitch so just to mirror what we've done on this side we need two sorry we need one double crochet above that stitch one double crochet in the chain one space and then in each of the last two stitches including the chain you'll place your two double crochets to finish out this row one and two so two in each of those last two stitches including the chain so two now to finish off in the top of the chain one and two Okay, so there we've finished up row three. Okay, moving on to row four. So we're going to chain our three once again. Each row starts with this chain three and turn. In that first stitch, double crochet. So you've got your two double crochets in that first stitch as usual. Two double crochets in the next stitch. Now you're going to chain three and skip three and then in the next stitch along you'll place three double crochets. So one in that same stitch, three double crochets and three. So you've chained three, skip three and in the next stitch along three double crochets. Chain three skip three, three double crochets in the next stitch along, one, two, and three. Chain three. Now we're at the center point now, so we're just going to do things slightly differently here. So skip your three, and then in the next stitch, place two double crochets. One and two. You're going to chain one. And then in the next stitch, two double crochets. One and two. And now, now we've passed the halfway point. We're just going to repeat and mirror our first half. So chain your three. One, two, and three. Skip your three, three double crochets in the next stitch. One and two, three. Chain three, skip three, one, two, three, three double crochets. One and two. And three and we've got one more chain three skip three one two three skip three and then in these last stitches you've got two double crochets each one and two And then in the top of the chain, you've got your final two in this row. One and two. Okay, so that finishes off row four. Okay, so our last row, row five, we're going to chain our three and turn. Double crochet in that first stitch as always. So we've got those two stitches in that first stitch including the chain now in each stitch until we get to the center here 
we're going to place just one double crochet and in each chain three space we're going to place three double crochets okay so above each stitch just one double crochet so you've got one double crochet in the, each of the next three stitches in the chain three space three double crochets one two and three now you're going to continue that I'm going to pause here and finish off this first half of row five so in each stitch one double crochet in each chain space three double crochets now I'll meet you when we get to so keep working so in those first two stitches at the center actually I'll meet you at this at this last chain three space here okay so place your your three double crochets in that last chain three space and I'll meet you and I'll show you what we'll do at the center here and then we'll just work the second half of row five which will mirror the first half okay so you go ahead and I'll meet you at, at this third chain three window okay so I finished off that first half of row five so I've placed my three double crochets in that last or that third chain three window. In the next two stitches in the center here, you'll place your one double crochet in each of those two stitches. In the chain one space in the center there, two double crochets, one and two. And then you'll just go ahead and mirror that first half of the row so one double crochet in each of the stitches and three double crochets in each of the chain three spaces okay so go ahead finish off and in the last stitch which will be your chain you'll place your two double crochets to, so you're exactly as I said you're exactly mirroring this first side so I'm going to finish off my second half here and I'll meet you just at that very last stitch and we'll finish off the row together okay so we've got these last four stitches left so just so to mirror this other side one double crochet in each of those first three stitches and then in the very last stitch which is the top of your chain you'll place your two double crochets so sometimes it can be a little bit tricky getting into that chain so one and two okay so that's the main part of our bandana finished okay so just make sure yeah it's sitting flat it's looking how you want it to so now we're going to move on and create the first tie okay so we're going to start down here now I'll give you some options for the ties I've just made them um, in this kind of slightly decorative way but you can you know I'll give you options once we get there so you're going to just start chaining for the length of the tie that you need so on this one which the yarn is slightly finer weight um, I how many did I chain I think I chained about 50 so if you want this see this decorative chain you'll ch need oh, sorry decorative tie you'll need to chain in multiples of five and then we'll add three chains on the end okay so multiples of five plus three if you don't want this look to your ties if you just want to slip stitch down the length of your ties for example then you don't need to worry about the multiples okay but if you're coming with me you'll chain I think yeah like I said I chained 50 so one two three four five so I'm going to go ahead and chain um, I'll probably because this yarn's a bit um, a bit you know thicker I'll probably chain about well 45 to 50 let's say so I'm going to go ahead and do that you do yours um, remembering to if you want that that look on the ties to chain in a multiple of five and then add three chains on the end okay see you shortly okay so I've gone with chaining 45 that'll be enough for Melba's next circumference and then I'm just adding three on the end there 
Okay, and this this last little this last end piece is going to be where we'll attach our our tassels. So in the third chain along, you're going to place a slip stitch. Okay, so the third chain from the hook, place a slip stitch, and then we're going to chain five. Four and five and then we're going to skip four and in the fifth stitch make a slip stitch so one two three four in the fifth make a slip stitch okay so we're going to have this little loop at the end to work our tassel into and then we've just got this slightly decorative look for our ties now like I said that's just optional if you want to just slip stitch or single crochet down the length of your ties then absolutely you can do that otherwise you'll just keep chaining five two three four and five skip four and in that fifth stitch you'll make a slip stitch okay so I'm going to do that all the way down my my chain and I'll meet you when we get back down here okay so once you're down the end of your tie whichever way you're doing it you'll just slip stitch into that last chain and then slip stitch into that last stitch just on the top there okay just to anchor your tie to the main bandana area and then you'll tie off on this side so just yarn over and pull through and then we're just going to tie on on the other side so pull that nice and tight we're just going to tie on to the other side to create the second tie okay so I'll show you how I tie on and then I'll just leave you to create your second tie so in the top of the chain, you'll just insert your hook. Now if you've got a different way that you tie on um, and you, that you're more comfortable with, then absolutely go ahead. But otherwise, I just insert my hook. So I've got my short end at the back, working end at the front of the hook, and then I just pull up a loop and chain one, just to secure it, and then I pull on that tail end. Okay, and then you'll go ahead and create your second tie exactly as you did your first tie and I'll see you once I've done that. Okay, so I've uh, made my second tie and now I'm just going to take a moment and weave in these tail ends. So you can do it now or you can do it at the end. I'm going to do it now. So let's just do one together. So I'll do this one here. So you'll just thread your needle and you'll weave, you'll weave your tail end nice and securely into the back of your work. So I'm, you know, I, I, I usually assume that you've got these basic techniques down pat. So you'll just make that nice and secure in there without, because you, you know, it's attached to the tie, so you want it to be nice and secure. But don't pull it too tight that you misshape your work. And then you'll just thread your your yarn down into the the back here and a good idea to go backwards and forwards a couple of times so I'm going to go through there and then I'm going to double back but just you know don't never double back exactly where you've come obviously that'll just unravel so I'm just going to go scoot to the side there and work my way down those double crochets Okay, so once again, just be careful you don't pull it too tight that you misshape your work. And then you'll snip off the excess. So I'm going to go ahead and finish off weaving in the other tail ends just before we move on to making the tassels and the, and the fringe. So you, you do the same and I'll see you soon. Okay, so my project is all nice and neat there. I've woven in all my tail ends. Now I'm going to show you how to make tassels. Now what I've chosen to do, and you know, you, you, can, you can choose to do differently to mine. So let's show you my previous one. So I've added fringe to the bottom, and I've added tassels to the end of the ties. Okay, so if you want to do what I've done, then you'll take... 
you know, your piece of card or whatever you're using to make your tassels. So I'll show you, I'll show you how I do it. And you'll take your yarn. Let's make a tassel first. So I don't want my tassels to be too thick. So I'm just going to wind. So that's one, two, three, and four, five. So because this yarn's quite, you know, quite thick, I'm going to just wind five times. Now that's a completely arbitrary number. You just choose how thick you want your tassels and you know you'll take into account your yarn and, and um, you know the look that you want. And um, yeah you can make them any any strand you know number of strands you like. I'm gonna do five winds. So you just you just need to keep track of how many winds you're doing. So each tassel is the same. Then you're gonna snip off this end and you'll take a length of your yarn and you'll place it under here. Oops, sorry, last chain. So before you take it off the card, just you're just going to secure your tassel with a length. So and leave enough that you can attach it to the end of your tie. So I've got maybe so I've got 30 centimetres there or so. And you're just going to secure it at the top there with a double knot. Just a simple double knot. Okay. And then you can remove your tassel. So you've got a tassel there. Just keep those two strands out of the way. And then you're going to take another length of yarn. And you know, maybe 20 centimeters don't need quite as much. And you're going to tie around, let's place that under there. So you're going to tie around. So you can that little head of the tassel, if you can picture what I mean. See this little this little head of the tassel here, you can make that as bigger or as small as you want. So this is what you're creating here. So you'll just let's say I want my the head of my tassel to be about that big and then you'll just tie so this is this is the head of your tassel here and you can just you know puff that out a little bit if you want to and you'll just once again tie a simple double knot now you want to incorporate these or you know the best way to do this is to incorporate these two tails of this this one you've just tied on into your tassels. So you might, this is where you might need your smaller crochet hook and or you can use your needle as well but you just want to get in up underneath where you've tied on. If it's not too tight, if it's too tight you use a needle. So I'm just going to get that up in there might even need to use my needle myself. Yeah, let's use my needle. Okay, so if you've tied that nice and tight, which you probably will have, you'll just want to see how this one's kind of sticking out from the tassel. You'll want to feed that underneath and let it fall as part of the tassel. So if you can't get your hook up under there, just use your needle and pull that through. So it falls down as part of your tassel. And don't worry if it's longer, we're going to tidy that up. So there's your first tassel nearly finished. And you can just snip, snip the loops. This is why you need nice sharp scissors. And then you can, you know, you can even those up now if you want to. I just tend to do a first evening up here and then I'll, I'll uh, even it up more once I've made my second tassel. So I'll make my second tassel but let's just attach our tassel to our 
to the end of our of our tie so you'll do this again for your second tie but let's just finish off this first one so I just place my hook through that little loop that we left at the end and I pull through one of the strands at the top of the tassel oops let's start that again my yarn is split there so once again you can do this with your needle so I'll just pull pull through one of the strands and then you're just going to tie once again a simple double knot at the top there one and two so just have your tassel sitting how you want it to pull that nice and tight now you're going to just weave in your tail ends these tail ends that you've just tied on just going to weave them into the top of the tie there so what I tend to do is I go in the back and I just weave it through that so that little circle that you've got at the top there that was your you know extra chain three I just weave it around that little that little circle and I do the first end and then I'll do the second end just to hide those hide those tails and snip off the excess okay so that's the first one done I'll weave the other one in off camera now if you need to just you know puff out your little tassel head can do that and that's the first tassel done now I'm going to go ahead I'm going to weave in my second tail on this end I'm going to create my second tassel for this second tie and then I'm going to tidy up the length that I want okay so I'll, once I've done my second one I'll just tidy up the length so you go ahead create your second tassel in exactly the same way and I'll meet you once that's attached to my other side. Okay, so once you've made your two tassels and attached them, you'll, you know, you'll decide how long you want them to be and you'll make them the same length. Let's give them a little haircut. Let's see how that is. It's pretty close. Just a little bit of length there. So yeah, you need quite sharp scissors for this. So I've got my my tassels on the end there, and now we're going to build our fringe. Now you've obviously got options here. You could um, make tassels for the the bottom of your bandana as you did for the ties. But if you want to add fringe like I did, it's a very similar technique. And I've got my card. So I'm going to, for the fringe, because I want it to be longer than my tassels, I'm using the, this length from here to here. Okay, so I'm going to, I like to make them, you know, longer than I need because, you know, it, it gives me plenty of room to, to tidy them up. Okay, so for these these fringe, I want the I don't want them as thick as my tassels, so I'm only going to wind three times, and then I'm just going to snip off the end. Now you don't need to tie them, tie the fringe. Just slip it off your slip it off your card. Keep keep your finger or your thumb in the loops and here's where your your uh, small crochet hook is again useful now what I tend to do is start at the center and work my way outwards so I go into the center point here put those strands onto my hook and pull through bring through a loop and then you'll feed the other end all those tails you'll feed them through that loop and then you'll just tie them on like that okay 
So you'll add as many of those as you want, and then of course again you'll you'll snip off the ends once you've added all your fringe. So I'm going to go ahead and add, last time I added, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I added one in the center and then five on each side. So, you know, you can add more, you could add less. It's entirely up to you. And as I said before, you could add, you know, the tass tassels would look kind of cool on here too. So you can add tassels instead of these this fringe. So I'm going to go and add, and I think I'll probably add the same again. I'll add five on each side. And that one in the center will give me 11 once again. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll make all my fringe and I'll meet you shortly. Okay, so I've attached all the fringe that I want. And now all that's left is just to go through and tidy them up. So I haven't bothered to cut all the loops just because I'm going to cut all that through anyway. So um, obviously these ones that are up higher on the on the bandana will be longer so you want to get everything nice and straight and then cut them to the length that you want so I'm gonna go now it depends what you're using the bandana for obviously you don't want it to get too much in the way of for your cat but if you're just using it for decoration then you know you can leave them a little bit longer I'll just remove all that and let's have a look. So yeah, I think that's going to be good because this is a slightly larger bandana, so I'm going to leave these ones a little bit shorter than the one last one I did. So there's your finished boho bandana with fringe or tassels, however you've done it. So I'd love to see how you've decided to work out your bandana. So you send along your photos to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet. So um, yeah, there's my two versions there. That bamboo version which is beautiful it's, I just love this bamboo yarn it's really really beautiful and then I've got this cotton acrylic version which is a bit a bit um, you know a bit larger a bit more bulky but I like that look too so uh, yeah thanks so much for being here and we hope to see you soon thanks very much bye bunny kicks ready to get down Okay. <laughs> yeah.